Chapters 10 through 13 of the Gospel according to John. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to John from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 10 through 13. Chapter 10. In most solemn truth I tell you that the man who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs over some other way, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens the door, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by their names and leads them out. When he has brought out his own sheep, all of them, he walks at the head of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But a stranger they will by no means follow, but will run away from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus spoke to them in this figurative language, but they did not understand what he meant. Again, therefore, Jesus said to them, In most solemn truth I tell you that I am the door of the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep would not listen to them. I am the door. If any one enters by me, he will find safety, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come, that they may have life, and may have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his very life for the sheep. The hired servant, one who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep, no sooner sees the wolf coming than he leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf worries and scatters them, for he is only a hired servant and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I am laying down my life for the sheep. I have also other sheep, which do not belong to this fold. Those also I must bring, and they will listen to my voice, and they shall become one flock under one shepherd. For this reason my Father loves me, because I am laying down my life in order to receive it back again. No one is taking it away from me, but I myself am laying it down. I am authorized to lay it down, and I am authorized to receive it back again. This is the command I received from my father. Again there arose a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, He is possessed by a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others argued, That is not the language of a demoniac. And can a demon open blind men's eyes? The dedication festival came on in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's portico, when the Jews gathered round him, and kept asking him, How long do you mean to keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us so plainly. I have told you, answered Jesus, and you do not believe. The deeds that I do in my Father's name, they give testimony about me, but you do not believe, because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them the life of the ages, and they shall never, never perish, nor shall any one wrest them from my hand. What my Father has given me is more precious than all besides, and no one is able to wrest anything from my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again the Jews brought stones with which to stone him. Jesus remonstrated with them. Many good deeds, he said, have I shown you as coming from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? For no good deed, the Jews replied, are we going to stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, who are only a man, are making yourself out to be God. Does it not stand written in your law? replied Jesus. I said, you are gods. If those to whom God's word was addressed are called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, how is it that you say to one another whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, You are blaspheming, because I said, I am God's Son? If the deeds I do are not my Father's deeds, do not believe me. But if they are, then even if you do not believe me, 
at least believe the deeds that you may know and see clearly that the father is in me and that i am in the father this made them once more try to arrest him but he withdrew out of their power then he went away again to the other side of the jordan to the place where john had been baptizing at first and there he stayed large numbers of people also came to him their report was john did not work any miracle but all that john said about this teacher was true and many became believers in him there chapter eleven now a certain man named lazarus of bethany was lying ill bethany being the village of mary and her sister martha it was the mary who poured the perfume over the lord and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was ill so the sisters sent to him to say master he whom you hold dear is ill jesus received the message and said this illness is not to end in death but is to promote the glory of god in order that the son of god may be glorified by it now jesus loved martha and her sister and lazarus when however he heard that lazarus was ill he still remained two days in that same place then after that he said to the disciples let us return to judea rabbi exclaimed the disciples the jews have just been trying to stone you and do you think of going back there again are there not twelve hours in the day replied jesus if any one walks in the daytime he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world but if a man walks by night he does stumble because the light is not in him he said this and afterwards he added our friend lazarus is sleeping but i will go and wake him master said the disciples if he is asleep he will recover now jesus had spoken of his death but they thought he referred to the rest taken in ordinary sleep so then he told them plainly lazarus is dead and for your sakes i am glad i was not there in order that you may believe but let us go to him let us go also thomas the twin said to his fellow disciples that we may die with him on his arrival jesus found that lazarus had already been three days in the tomb bethany was near jerusalem the distance being a little less than two miles and a considerable number of the jews were with martha and mary having come to express sympathy with them on the death of their brother martha however as soon as she heard the tidings jesus is coming went to meet him but mary remained sitting in the house so martha came and spoke to jesus master if you had been here she said my brother would not have died and even now i know that whatever you ask god for god will give you your brother shall rise again replied jesus i know said martha that he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day i am the resurrection and the life said jesus he who believes in me even if he has died he shall live and every one who is living and is a believer in me shall never never die do you believe this yes master she replied i thoroughly believe that you are the christ the son of god who was to come into the world after saying this she went and called her sister mary privately telling her the rabbi is here and is asking for you so she on hearing that rose up quickly to go to him now jesus was not yet come into the village but was still at the place where martha had met him so the jews who were with mary in the house sympathizing with her when they saw that she had risen hastily and had gone out followed her supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep aloud there mary then when she came to jesus and saw him fell at his feet and exclaimed master if you had been here my brother would not have died seeing her weeping aloud and the jews in like manner weeping who had come with her jesus curbing the strong emotion of his spirit though deeply troubled asked them where have you laid him master come and see was their reply jesus wept see how dear he held him said the jews but others of them asked was this man who opened the blind man's eyes 
unable to prevent this man from dying jesus however again restraining his strong feeling came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone had been laid against the mouth of it take away the stone said jesus martha the sister of the dead man exclaimed master by this time there is a foul smell for it is three days since he died did i not promise you replied jesus that if you believe you shall see the glory of god so they removed the stone then jesus lifted up his eyes and said father i thank thee that thou hast heard me i know that thou always hearest me but for the sake of the crowds standing round i have said this that they may believe that thou didst send me after speaking thus he called out in a loud voice lazarus come out the dead man came out his hands and feet wrapped in cloths and his face wrapped round with a towel untie him said jesus and let him go free thereupon a considerable number of the jews namely those who had come to mary and had witnessed his deeds became believers in him though some of them went off to the pharisees and told them what he had done therefore the high priests and the pharisees held a meeting of the sanhedrin what steps are we taking they asked one another for this man is performing a great number of miracles if we leave him alone in this way everybody will believe in him and the romans will come and blot out both our city and our nation but one of them named caiaphas being high priest that year said you know nothing about it you do not reflect that it is to your interest that one man should die for the people rather than the whole nation perish it was not as a mere man that he thus spoke but being high priest that year he was inspired to declare that jesus was to die for the nation and not for the nation only but in order to unite into one body all the far scattered children of god so from that day forward they planned and schemed in order to put him to death therefore jesus no longer went about openly among the jews but he left that neighborhood and went into the district near the desert to a town called ephraim and remained there with the disciples the jewish passover was coming near and many from that district went up to jerusalem before the passover to purify themselves they therefore looked out for jesus and asked one another as they stood in the temple what do you think will he come to the festival at all now the high priests and the pharisees had issued orders that if any one knew where he was he should give information so that they might arrest him chapter twelve jesus however six days before the passover came to bethany where lazarus was whom he had raised from the dead so they gave a dinner there in honor of jesus at which martha waited at table but lazarus was one of the guests who were with him availing herself of the opportunity mary took a pound weight of pure spikenard very costly and poured it over his feet and wiped his feet with her hair so that the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume then said judas the iscariot one of the twelve the one who afterwards betrayed jesus why was not that perfume sold for three hundred shillings and the money given to the poor the reason he said this was not that he cared for the poor but that he was a thief and that being in charge of the money-box he used to steal what was put into it but jesus interposed do not blame her he said allow her to have kept it for the time of my preparation for burial for the poor you always have with you but you have not me always now it became widely known among the jews that jesus was there but they came not only on his account but also in order to see lazarus whom he had brought back to life the high priests however consulted together to put lazarus also to death for because of him many of the jews left them and became believers in jesus the next day a great crowd of those who had come to the festival hearing that jesus was coming to jerusalem took branches of the palm-trees and went out to meet him shouting as they went god save him blessings on him who comes in the name of the lord even on the king of israel and jesus having procured a young ass sat upon it just as the scripture says fear not daughter of zion see thy king is coming riding on an ass's colt 
The meaning of this his disciples did not understand at the time, but after Jesus was glorified, they recollected that this was written about him, and that they had done this to him. The large number of people, however, who had been present when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and brought him back to life, related what they had witnessed. This was also why the crowd came to meet him, because they had heard of his having performed that miracle. The result was that the Pharisees said among themselves, Observe how idle all your efforts are! The world is gone after him! Now some of those who used to come up to worship at the festival were Greeks. They came to Philip of Bethsaida in Galilee, with the request, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip told Jesus. His answer was, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. In most solemn truth I tell you that unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains what it was, a single grain, but that if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. He who holds his life dear is destroying it, and he who makes his life of no account in this world shall keep it to the life of the ages. If a man wishes to be my servant, let him follow me, and where I am, there too shall my servant be. If a man wishes to be my servant, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul full of trouble. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Thereupon there came a voice from the sky. I have glorified it, and will also glorify it again. The crowd that stood by and heard it said that there had been thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. It is not for my sake, said Jesus, that that voice came, but for your sakes. Now is a judgment of this world. Now will the prince of this world be driven out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. He said this to indicate the kind of death he would die. The crowd answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ remains forever. In what sense do you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is that Son of Man? Yet a little while, he replied, the light is among you. Be faithful to the light that you have, for fear darkness should overtake you. For a man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. In the degree that you have light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. Jesus said this, and went away, and hid himself from them. But though he had performed such great miracles in their presence, they did not believe in him, in order that the words of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed our preaching? And the arm of the Lord, to whom has it been unveiled? For this reason they were unable to believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and made their minds callous, lest they should see with their eyes and perceive with their minds, and should turn, and I should heal them. Isaiah uttered these words because he saw his glory, and he spoke of him. Nevertheless, even from among the rulers many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees they did not avow their belief, for fear they should be shut out from the synagogue, for they loved the glory that comes from men rather than the glory that comes from God. But Jesus cried aloud, He who believes in me believes not so much in me as in him who sent me, and he who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come like light into the world, in order that no one who believes in me may remain in the dark. And if any one hears my teachings and regards them not, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who sets me at naught and does not receive my teachings is not left without a judge. The message which I have spoken will judge him on the last day, because I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me himself gave me a command what to say and in what words to speak. And I know that his command is the life of the ages. What therefore I speak, I speak just as the Father has bidden me. Chapter 13 Now just before the feast of the Passover this incident took place. 
Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. While supper was proceeding, the devil, having by this time suggested to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, the thought of betraying him, Jesus, although he knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come forth from God and was now going to God, rose from the table, threw off his upper garments, and took a towel and tied it round him. Then he poured water into a basin, and proceeded to wash the feet of the disciples, and to wipe them with the towel which he had put round him. When he came to Simon Peter, Peter objected. Master, he said, are you going to wash my feet? What I am doing, answered Jesus, for the present you do not know, but afterwards you shall know. Never, while the world lasts, said Peter, shall you wash my feet. If I do not wash you, replied Jesus, you have no share with me. Master, said Peter, wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Any one who has lately bathed, said Jesus, does not need to wash more than his feet, but is clean all over. And you, my disciples, are clean, and yet this is not true of all of you. For he knew who was betraying him, and that was why he said, You are not all of you clean. So after he had washed their feet, put on his garments again, and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me the rabbi and the master, and rightly so, for such I am. If I then, your master and rabbi, have washed your feet, it is also your duty to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example in order that you may do what I have done to you. In most solemn truth I tell you that a servant is not superior to his master, nor is a messenger superior to him who sent him. If you know all this, blessed are you if you act accordingly. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but things are as they are in order that the scripture may be fulfilled, which says, he who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. From this time forward I tell you things before they happen, in order that when they do happen you may believe that I am he. In most solemn truth I tell you that he who receives whoever I send receives me, and that he who receives me receives him who sent me. After speaking thus, Jesus was troubled in spirit, and said with deep earnestness, in most solemn truth I tell you, that one of you will betray me. The disciples began looking at one another, at a loss to know to which of them he was referring. There was at table one of his disciples, the one Jesus loved, reclining with his head on Jesus' bosom. Making a sign therefore to him, Simon Peter said, Tell us to whom he is referring. So he, having his head on Jesus' bosom, leaned back and asked, Master, who is it? It is the one, answered Jesus, for whom I shall dip this piece of bread, and to whom I shall give it. Accordingly he dipped the piece of bread, and took it and gave it to Judas, the son of the Iscariot, Simon. Then, after Judas had received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Lose no time about it, said Jesus to him but why he said this no one else at the table understood. Some, however, supposed that because Judas had the money-box, Jesus meant, buy what we require for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So Judas took the piece of bread and immediately went out, and it was night. So when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Moreover, God will glorify him in himself, and will glorify him without delay. Dear children, I am still with you a little longer. You will seek me, but, as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So for the present I say to you, a new commandment I give you, to love one another, that as I have loved you, you also may love one another. It is by this that every one will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Master, inquired Simon Peter, where are you going? 
where i am going replied jesus you cannot be my follower now but you shall be later master asked peter again why cannot i follow you now i will lay down my life on your behalf you say you will lay down your life on my behalf said jesus in most solemn truth i tell you that the cock will not crow before you have three times disowned me the end of chapters ten through thirteen recording by mark penfold